Mom, please leave now. My daughter's cold stare pierced through me. Honestly, it's annoying that I have to keep taking care of you forever. And it especially sucks when it's a parent who has a physical disability. I feel like I'm being sent to hell, but I can't say anything back to her because what she's saying is true. The accident has made it harder for me to move my body, and now I rely on a cane even just to walk. It's only natural for my daughter, who is now grown up, to find me a burden. I managed to push myself up to the table and bowed my head towards my daughter. I'm sorry, honey. You're right. I think I've been causing you a lot of trouble all this time. If you understand, then leave quickly. I'll call a taxi for you. So, be grateful for that. With that, my daughter Jenny threw a large bag outside the door. When I opened it, it was filled to the brim with my clothes and daily necessities. She must have been preparing for it quite some time. It hurt me to think that I had been causing her so much pain for a long time. Memories of the time I spent with my beloved daughter flooded my mind. My life, raising and nurturing her, had been so happy, so I didn't really want to be away from her. After a while, I wiped away my tears and began to prepare to leave the house. I'm Tamara. I had married my husband Steve when I was 20 years old. Among my friends, I was one of the first to get married. I always thought that if I were to get married, it would be to no one other than him. And Steve also said the same. After enjoying our newlywed life together for a year, we were blessed with a daughter Jenny. When she was small, she was often got sick. She not only caught colds easily, but she also had a tendency to swell up more than other children when bitten by insects. As it was our first time raising a child, I felt completely lost. But now, she has grown up to be a fine adult. Every time I see her in a smart brand suit, I can't help but think how much she has grown up. After two decades of my married life, I noticed something strange. My husband started coming home later and going on business trips more frequently, which was unusual. At first, I thought it was because he had been promoted, but then I started to suspect him. However, I kept avoiding those suspicions. My husband and I had always gotten along well, and there was no way that he could betray me. I kept asking myself those questions and began to have sleepless nights since then. The reality soon caught up with me. One day, I was sleep deprived and slipped on the stairs at work. Fortunately, I wasn't seriously injured, but my left leg became quite disabled. I went through physical therapy after being hospitalized, but my recovery has been slow. I had no choice but to quit my part-time job, and now I'm doing some work that I can do at home. Since my opportunities to walk outside and talk to people have decreased, I became more contemplative than before. Today, I finished my work and was making dinner. I needed a large plate, but it was on a shelf that I couldn't reach without standing on tiptoe. I didn't feel like going through the trouble of getting a step stool. It was when I opened the clapboard and tried to reach for it by stretching that and happen. I'm home. Huh? Mom, what are you doing? I'm just getting the plate. No, it's okay. Let me get it for you. Jenny came running to me without even changing her clothes and grabbed the plate from the cupboard. Since my legs stopped working well, Jenny had started to come home at the same time every day to help me, even though she's in the prime of her work and life. It's appreciated, but at the same time, I feel sorry. Watching Jenny eager to help, I felt a sense of sadness. And that night, I was in the bathroom when I heard a voice from the living room. 
Hey, Dad, can't you come home a little earlier? Can't help it. It's work, you know. If you were that worried about Mom, why don't you hire a helper? I'll pay for it. That's not the point. As I listened, I felt my spirits sink and let out a sigh. The incident happened on Saturday. The weather was bad and my legs hurt, so I didn't feel like moving at all. But I couldn't just sit still, so I was solving crossword puzzles in the living room to distract myself. My husband was working on his day off, and Jenny had been holed up in her room all morning. Around the time it was getting close to lunch, I heard Jenny's footsteps approaching. Jenny, should we have lunch now? Just as I was about to say that, I clumped up because Jenny had a concerned look on her face. Jenny, what's wrong? I'm sick of this. Jenny clenches her fist, and a voice looking at me. Just leave and go back home. You can go to your parents' place, right? Honestly, it's annoying that I have to keep taking care of you forever. Jenny's cold stare pierces me. I feel like I've been thrown into hell all of a sudden, but I can't say anything back. It's only natural for a daughter to feel annoyed with a mother who can't even walk without a cane. I manage to lean on the table and stand up, and I bow my head to my daughter. I'm sorry, honey. You're right. I think I've been causing you a lot of trouble all this time. If you understand, then leave quickly. I'll call a taxi for you. Be grateful for it, okay? With that, Jenny throws a big bag outside the door. It's filled with the brim with my clothes and daily necessities. She must have prepared it a long time ago. It was painful to think. That I had been making that child suffer for such a long time. Wiping away my tears, I began to prepare to leave the house. I got into the taxi that Jenny had arranged for me, and headed to my parents' house. Tears continued to overflow, no matter how much I wiped them away. I felt pathetic for causing trouble to my daughter and parents. When I arrived at my parents' house. They were waiting outside for me. It seemed that Jenny had already given the taxi fare, and so life in my parents' house began. Fortunately, they were both physically and mentally healthy and didn't complain about taking care of me. Tamara, you used to watch this, right? Whoa, Dad, where did you find it? After dinner, my father played the music video I used to watch a lot. He said he had bought the DVD at a secondhand store. My mother also started buying new books by my favorite author for me. While I was grateful, I also felt sorry for causing trouble. Even if it can't help that I am a burden, I thought I should at least earn some money myself. Now that my living environment had settled down, I began to consider restarting my work-at-home job. On the morning of my second week back home, I woke up to a noise. When I looked outside the window, I saw a surprising sight. Jenny was throwing a garbage bag into our yard. I quickly opened the window and called out to her, "Jenny, what are you doing?" Jenny looked startled but quickly ran away. I struggled to get up and make my way to the front door. By the time I got there, I was completely exhausted. But when I finally made it out of my room, I ran into my mother. M- Mom, didn't Jenny come here earlier? Huh? No, no, she didn't. But I saw her. She threw something into our yard. You must have been mistaken. Anyway, let's have breakfast. My mother pushed me from behind, and I couldn't say anything more. Although I thought about asking Jenny on the phone. I couldn't gather the courage to do so. No matter what I did that day, I was distracted. It seemed like it wasn't just my imagination that day, as I saw a garbage bag in the yard afterwards. However, by the time I noticed it and went to pick it up, 
it had already been cleaned up. I secretly decided to sleep in the living room in order to somehow check the contents of the bag. Another early morning, I heard a noise and woke up. I rushed towards the direction of the sound coming from the entrance. When I opened the door, Jenny was nowhere to be seen. However, the garbage bag was firmly placed there. When I opened it, there were many familiar things inside, such as my favorite books, DVDs, and family photo albums. I thought that maybe she came to throw them away, but then I suddenly remembered. Could it be that what my parents had given me were the things Jenny wrote? But why would she do such a thing? As I tried to calm my restless mind and looked inside the bag, I found the photo of an unfamiliar woman entering a hotel with Steve. Domra? My mother's voice came from behind, and I turned around. Seeing my state, she seemed to understand everything, and suggested that we talk inside, taking a garbage bag with her. Well, actually. Jenny came to me for advice. She said that Steve seemed to be cheating on you. I was hit by a shock, not because of my husband's infidelity, but because my daughter knew about it. My mother began to speak with a solemn expression, telling me everything that had happened. Jenny happened to be present when Steve and his mistress were talking on the phone. My wife can't walk. And she can't do anything by herself. Is there any way to get rid of her? <laughs> When Jenny heard that, she felt a sense of crisis and evacuated me to my parents' house. She deliberately used strong language to drive me out, thinking that if she told me the truth, I would be in even greater danger. Jenny hired the detective to continue investigating my husband's infidelity, and they plan to take it court with the evidence they have gathered. After hearing all of this, I was completely stunned. I'm sorry for deceiving you, but Jenny made us to keep it a secret. I shook my head at my mother's words, feeling the kindness of my daughter and parents seep into my heart. Although Steve's betrayal was painful, their worms was even more heartwarming. Mom, I have a favor to ask. Few days later, I went to my house with my parents. When I rang the doorbell, Jenny came out with faint dark circles under her eyes. She looked surprised, but let us in. Steve seemed to be out at the moment. My father explained the situation to Jenny. Yeah, that's right. I was planning to go pick you up, you know. After everything was Dad's affair was resolved. Mom, I'm sorry for what I did. Jenny, don't. I'm sorry. It must have been really hard for you to carry this burden alone. Mom, um, um. I should be the one to face it. So don't worry, honey. Okay. Upon hearing this, Jenny burst into tears. We hugged each other for the first time in years and cried until we felt better. That night, we ambushed Steve and made him kneel in front of us at the entrance. When we showed him the photo that Jenny had brought, he made a guilty expression. This is you, isn't it? Huh. Well, what are you talking about? All of a sudden, that looks like someone else. Stop with the lame excuses. It's not an excuse. Look, I don't even have this jacket. When my father grabbed Steve's shoulder, he gasped in surprise. After taking a small breath, my father spoke in a low voice we had never heard before. If you keep spouting such nonsense, I'll, I, I'll tell you the truth. I'm sorry. Steve became tearful and began to confess everything. 
It turned out that he had been cheating for more than two years. The other woman was a young female employee, who was almost the same age as Jenny. At first, he thought it was just a fling, but he missed the chance to end it. I just wanted to impress her. I didn't mean it when I said I wanted you to disappear. Please, Tamara, believe me. I swear. Of course, I was unable to forgive him, and presented him my divorce papers and my conditions while he was in tears. Several months have passed since then. Jenny, lunch is ready. Okay, okay, I'll serve. So you sit down, Mom. After Steve left, our house became more spacious. Surprisingly. Steve had been secretly hiding some assets, but he lost everything due to the large amount of compensations he had to pay. The rumor of his infidelity had already spread throughout the company, and his job was in danger. Dad called me again the other day. He's so persistent. Oh, really? But anyway, about the money. Do we have to talk about that again? I told you I don't want it. I know, but I was planning to give the compensation money to both my daughter and parents, except for the amount I need to hire a caregiver. That way, I could free Jenny from my care, and our parents could live more comfortably. But both of them refused to take it. Use it to create a life with Jenny and make memories for the future. That's what my parents told me. Jenny also said, "No, I can't accept it. It's your money, Mom." I tried to let her accept the money many times, but every time she refused. Then, let's go on a trip together. How about that, Mom? A trip? Well, yeah. We take pictures and updates all the bad things happened to us with fond memories. What do you say, Mom? Both my daughter and my parents had suggested a trip many times before. However, I always refused because I thought it would inconvenience everyone. I realize now that they asked me upon understanding everything for their sake and for my own sake. I can take a step forward now. Yeah, why not? Shall we go? Jenny's face lit up when I replied. Mom, really? Yay! Have to plan it right away then. Oh, I'm gonna call Grandma and Grandpa. Mom, where do you wanna go? As I age, I am sure that my physical problems will increase. Nevertheless, I want to do my best to live without giving up. I secretly made a vow to myself and smiled at my dear daughter, who was smiling in front of me.